united forever in friendship and labor. Our mighty republics will ever endure. The great Soviet Union will live through the ages. The dream of a people, their fortress secure. Long live our Soviet motherland. Built by the people's mighty hand. They were identified as being special. They were given special treatment. To this day, if you ask an averagely educated Russian, name some famous black person from Russian history. They will probably mention Abram Ganyibal, who lived at the beginning of the 18th century, and whom they know about because he was an ancestor of Alexander Pushkin, Russia's national writer. But there were hardly any black people of any renown who did anything sufficiently noteworthy for people to know about them, really until the 1920s, when American black people started going to Soviet Russia. Коммунистические пропагандисты говорили, что э, буржуазная демократия это вывеска. Из этой вывеской на самом деле власть э, буржуазии, власть капиталистов, власть денежного мешка. Надо сказать, что в значительной степени так и было. Они обещали что-то новое. Они обещали новое общество. My grandmother was named Williana Jones, and then she married a man named Charles Burroughs, so she became Williana Jones Burroughs. They were activists for better rights for black people in general. And so she became more and more interested in the Soviet Union and, and more and more interested in going there. And she started going to the international congresses of the Communist Party. But then, I think it was 1929, when she actually went to the one in the Soviet Union. There was a special interest in, in blacks in the first place, is that Lenin himself proclaimed that this is a part of humanity that's a very good symbol of what's wrong with capitalism and imperialism. And so blacks were singled out as a, a good illustration, especially of, of what the leading capitalist economies were doing. They needed skilled labor to come in and try to build their economy. They wanted to be one of the world's leading economies. They recruited thousands of, of Americans and they were able to do this in part because the Great Depression had come about in the West. So they were recruiting people from every place. And of course the industrialization process of Russia economy, of Soviet Russia economy, was impossible without technology coming from the United States. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt was taking certain uh, political decisions. And it was finally realized that the Russians knew a lot more about us than we knew about them. You need to know your enemy, right? They saw that the race problem in the United States was a convenient example to hold up to the world. Black bodies swinging. <laughs> It was very attractive to certain individuals who were adventurous enough to try someplace else, even if they weren't sure what it was going to be like. 
Я полечу отсюда быстрее птиц домой. Я родился в России, ну тогда это был Советский Союз, мои родители из Америки. Папа у меня черный американец, мама белая американка. Вот они приехали, здесь познакомились, они не знали в Америке друг друга. И родили меня и сестру, которая сейчас уже в Америке, а вот я здесь. Когда он приехал сюда, он увидел, что огромное количество людей, и в первую очередь женщин, просто боготворили его. Здесь он получил такую порцию внимания, что он поехал в первую очередь за этим вниманием, понимая также, что из этого он извлечет еще и рабочую пользу. Масса, капитан, разрешите мне вывез этого повара на завтрак акулам. В последнее время он мало интересует. Меня зовут Елена Ханга, и мои бабушка и дедушка приехали в 28 году из Америки, из Нью-Йорка в Советский Союз, а точнее их отправили в Узбекистан. Мой дедушка, поскольку он был афроамериканец, а моя бабушка была белая, польская еврейка, они э, бежали от расизма. А мой дедушка был специалистом по хлопку. Он же из Миссисипи сам. Поэтому он и поехал в Ташкент, где, как мы знаем, вот житница вся хлопка. Именно в это время Советский Союз закупал машины перерабатывающие. И он обучал узбекских специалистов, хлопкоробов, как правильно, механизированно обрабатывать хлопок. The Bolshevik regime was too unknown. Uh, they said one thing and did another. They could be very welcoming to Claude McKay at the same time that they've opened the Solovki concentration camp in the north and are killing off and driving out members of social classes that they didn't like. There were some common features in our uh, respective histories. Black Americans have been fighting for their independence, for equality, for the 430 years that they have been on the American continent. We draw that with, you know, the Russians and Soviets. There was this idea of fighting against oppression. A number of cultural features were things I could identify with. In fact, Negro spirituals and some of the, the Russian traditional folk songs I immediately recognized as having a relationship. The Russians never tried to enslave black people. They enslaved their own peasantry by transforming them into serfs. So the status of blacks in Russia was unique in that regard. And this lasted all the way up into the the end of the Soviet era in many respects because the public was conditioned to enforce official doctrine. As long as the Communist Party was all powerful, that ideological protection backed up by the police state enforced a certain kind of behavior that made it safe for Africans to roam the streets any day or night. Now it's very dangerous. To hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. <laughs>